Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the 2D Collatogen package with the 2D Toolkit framework. In this video, we will show you how to start from the raw demo scene that is included in the package and turn it into an interactive scene by adding precise polygon colliders to it using the 2D Collatogen toolset. We've prepared an empty project only with the 2D Toolkit and 2D Collatogen packages added. There is no need for any additional packages or Unity Pro features. Now let's open the Demo 2D Toolkit RAW scene. The scene contains a movable objects group with boxes and rocks, and a foreground sprite badger group with some static sprites. Note that the movable objects already have some rigid body components attached. If you hit play, you can see that they are falling down, but without colliders, they don't interact with each other. We now go to 2D Collidogen, 2D Toolkit specific, Show Collidogen TK2D window. You can see that the Sprite Collection window automatically shows up. You might have noticed that there is an item at Alpha Mesh Collider, which is greyed out. At other 2D packages, you would use this item to add Alpha Mesh Collider components to your objects to generate the colliders. However, for 2D Toolkit sprites, we have integrated the mesh generation right into the sprite collection editor to make it more comfortable to use. If we have no sprite collection selected in the window, we select a game object that has a TK2D sprite component and hit the Edit button next to the collection label. We now select all sprites that need colliders and hit Update Collider in order to automatically generate polygon colliders for all of them. If you are unhappy with the results, you can tweak the Outline Vertex Count parameter to fine-tune the number of vertices. You can see that the collider updates in real-time as we adjust the value. In rare occasions, your computer might be too slow to update the collider smoothly enough. You can then disable Editor Live Update and hit Update Collider manually to update the collider less frequently. This should only be necessary in case of very high resolution sprite images or atlases. If you are unhappy with semi-transparent parts, you can change the alpha opaque threshold to change the threshold above which a pixel is considered solid. Tick Force Convex if you need the outline to be convex. This will be necessary for removable rigid body objects. Remember that the Unity Physics manual reads, Mesh colliders can't normally collide with each other. If a mesh collider is marked as convex, then it can collide with another mesh collider. Therefore, we select a rolling rock, reduce the vertex count, and tick force convex. Now to enable collisions, we have to tick convex at the sprite as well. And the same for our box. We reduce the vertex count to 4, and enable convex at the sprite. Note that we don't need the star 5 object to be convex, since it will rotate in place instead of moving around. It cannot collide with our static concave objects anyway. It will, however, correctly collide with our convex boxes and rolling rocks. If you need to flip the inside out at your collider shape, you can tick the Flip Normals checkbox. These four parameters are what you would normally need for a typical scene. In case you have special needs, you can open the Advanced Settings section. But first, we are going to check out what we have created so far. We hit Commit to apply the changes. When trying to close the window, it will instantly reopen as long as the Collidogen TK2D window is open. In order to close the Sprite Collection window, you have to close the Collider Gen TKTD window first. You can see that the colliders have been added to the objects.
You can safely ignore the error messages, update mask from shapes, compute mesh inertia tensor failed for run of the actor's mesh shapes. These errors occur because the rigid body components are already attached when changing the colliders, which intermediately leaves them with the flat mesh of the sprite, which has no depth and therefore no mass. After issuing the error, the correct inertia tensor is automatically calculated based on the mesh collider. Just clear the console output window and don't bother about the messages. If we hit play now, we can see that the objects are already behaving as they should. Now we'll take a look at the advanced settings section. Here you can adjust the scale or set a custom offset. Notice that the 2D toolkit package limits the collider to the image borders. If you need larger colliders, you could change the sprite image and add a larger transparent border around it. Finally, you can set a custom image instead of the sprite image as a base for the collider shape. Now let's change the shape a little. To change it back to the original sprite image, we select none of the custom image again, and we're back at the normal collider shape. If you should ever need more than 100 outline vertices, you can go to 2D Collider Gen Collider Preferences. Here we can tweak the initial values for Live Update, Outline Vertex Count and Vertex Count Slider Max. You can ignore the other two parameters if you are using the 2D Toolkit package. In our case we want to increase the Vertex Count Slider Max to 200. As we close and reopen the window, we can now increase the slider up to 200. This concludes the tutorial. Thanks for watching.